Welcome to Arkham. The year is 1926 and it is the height of the Roaring Twenties. Flappers dance till dawn in smoke-filled speakeasies, drinking alcohol supplied by rum runners and the mob. It's a celebration to end all celebrations in the aftermath of the war to end all wars. Yet a dark shadow grows in the city of Arkham. Alien entities known as Ancient Ones lurk in the emptiness beyond space and time, writhing at the gates between worlds. These gates have begun to open and must be closed before the Ancient Ones make our world their ruined dominion. Only a handful of investigators stand against the Arkham Horror. Will they prevail? Find out. Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Arkham Horror, the second edition from 2005. A cooperative game where we play as investigators trying to close gates that will be popping up all around the city before the horrifying Ancient One has the chance to wake up. I love this game and I hope I can show you why in a great big playthrough. Now everything that you can see is from the base game of Arkham Horror. I do have expansions that I've actually, I haven't played with an expansion yet. Just before bits get chucked in, I thought I'd like to film a video with just the base game on because if you see this and you would like to have a go yourself or try to find a copy, then the game seems to be quite available still. It's the expansions that are harder to track down and really expensive. The base game as it is, it's got a lot of stuff in it and you should be able to get your hands on a copy relatively easily. Before we get started, I'd recommend you turn on your Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they'll hopefully be corrected there. Uh, there are a million and one things going on in this game though, between keywords and cards and items and things. There's bound to be stuff that gets missed. Pop a comment on if you spot anything. And if you'd like to help me keep making playthroughs, there are links to Patreon and Kofi in the description. Every little helps keep it all going and your support will be massively appreciated. Thanks everyone. So let's meet our investigators. We have Gloria Goldberg, the author. If you've played other Arkham Files things, say Eldritch Horror or the card game, you'll probably notice a lot of familiar names. In some cases, maybe not quite so familiar faces. As a young girl, Gloria was haunted by terrible visions. After years of visiting doctors and some therapy, she learned to control her visions, somewhat by writing stories. Her weird and disturbing fiction somehow spoke to the public in these troubled times and has made her a best-selling writer. This evening, while leaving a book signing she's attending in Arkham, she was knocked to the ground by the most powerful vision she's ever experienced. Gloria saw the sky tear open and a huge and monstrous form pour out of the very air itself, wreaking untold havoc and killing thousands. As she sat on the ground with her arms wrapped around herself, Gloria knew somehow that this vision was real and that it would come to pass unless she did something about it. Now she finds herself in a run-down diner, sipping coffee and trying to decide what to do. So we have an amount of sanity and health. It tells us where our character starts in Velma's Diner, the rundown diner that we mentioned. And you get some fixed possessions. So Gloria has got seven dollars and two clue tokens. And also gets some random possessions just drawn from shuffled decks. She starts out with a skill plus one luck. And when she spends clues to get more dice in luck tests, she gets extra dice. Now unusually, all of the things that we've kind of drawn from these decks are, are a little bit combatty, so maybe there'll be a lot of fighting going on. Gloria has got an axe which will help her with uh, combat checks against things that aren't bothered by physical attacks, and a motorcycle which will really help her speed around Arkham. She has a wither spell that will help her with fighting, and the voice of raw spell that will help you with every skill test you do for the rest of your turn. She has a special ability which is her psychic sensitivity. This will help her have a bit of choice when she has encounters in other worlds, which we'll want to do to shut them gates. We also have this grid of skills. So they're paired up. You decide where they start. And at the start of each round, you have a number of focus. That's how many you can slide your skills around to adjust what you need. You might really want to move a load. You might know that a fight is on the way and want to slide that all the way up. So. That's how skills are handled in this game. As in other Arkham things, it is the number of dice that you're gonna roll when you're called upon to make a check. Gloria is also our first player, that's why she's got that token. We have Vincent Lee, the doctor. A Yale graduate of medicine, Vincent has recently moved to Arkham from Boston to practice at St. Mary's Hospital. Since his coming to Arkham, he has seen too many horrible and unexplained deaths, an elderly victim torn apart by unknown wild animals, a healthy young man whose heart exploded, and so many others. Their faces haunt his dreams, especially the young man's terrified expression. After all this, small wonder that Vincent has begun to wonder if there's something sinister going on in this quiet Massachusetts town. 
Tonight, Dr. Lee made the decision to investigate the mysteries of Arkham and stop the strange deaths. He is determined to see this through, even if in doing so he becomes another puzzle for the next Doctor who comes to Arkham. So Vincent starts out in St. Mary's Hospital. He has $9 and a clue token. He's got five health, five sanity. And amongst his random possessions that he got given, he is a marksman. He can reroll combat checks. He has whiskey that can help him reduce sanity loss. He has got a bullwhip that will help him in combat checks. And for his spells, he's got the Mists of Rella, which will help him pass evade checks. And aptly a heal spell you wouldn't think he needed magic to do it but he does vincent's special ability is a physician uh, in the upkeep phase he can restore a stamina a health to himself or another character where he is but you can't heal past your maximum and finally we've got joe diamond the private eye this job sounded simple enough pick up a statue at the providence museum and deliver it to a guy at the silver twilight lodge the money was good and the dame who gave him the job seemed sincere sadly things never seem to work out that easily for joe now the statue is missing, two people are dead, strange cultists are on his tail, and all clues lead to Arkham. Lady Luck can be funny that way. He's already tried talking to the sheriff, but that flatfoot proved to be worse than useless. Looks like it's once again going to be up to Joe Diamond to solve the case. He starts out at the police station. He's got four sanity, six health. He hasn't actually been given these, has he? He starts out with eight dollars, three clue tokens, and his 45 automatic. And then he randomly got given an 18 derringer as well. They do only take up one hand slot each, though, so he can dual wield those. And an old journal, which he can use to make a law check, and if he passes it, he can get some clues. And his skill is stealth. He can exhaust this to reroll evade checks if he wants to sneak by some monsters, if he doesn't think that his guns are going to be enough. And his special ability is hunches. He rolls an extra bonus die whenever he spends a clue to add a die to a roll. And our ancient one for this game is Yig. I was tempted to go for Cthulhu, because Cthulhu's who we played against in practically all of our games when I first got this many 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 years ago but Cthulhu is also the one that the rulebook kind of warned you about is the most difficult one and Arkham Horror does pride itself on saying that you're probably not going to win this so Yig has worshippers who are actually disguised serpent people their bite is highly poisonous so the cultists that are in the monster cup have got certain stats uh, there is only 10 doom on the track so this might be a shorter game which the rubric did say as soon as there's 10 doom on that track yig wakes up and we'll have to have a big fight which we will in all likelihood lose and he's got an ability yig's anger while he stirs in his slumber he gains a doom token whenever a cultist is defeated or an investigator is lost in time and space and he'll do some other things when the actual battle starts but we won't worry about that for now hopefully we will be able to close all of the gates and not have to worry about any of that stuff. If we have closed every gate on the board, and between us we have got three gate trophies, you basically keep the gate once you've closed it, but you can spend gate trophies on things. They have to be unspent. So close all the gates and have three gate trophies, the number of players, we win. If we can get six or more elder signs on the board, so you can put elder signs out by not just closing gates, actually spending a load of clues to seal the gates. If we can do that six times, we will win the game. Or we wait until Doom kind of builds up, Yig awakens, and we defeat him. We would win then as well. We've got one last bit of setup to do, which is to draw a Mythos card. We'll be doing this at the end of every round as well, but this is going to spawn a gate and do some other things. So this is Noden's favour. First of all, perhaps a bit strangely, we need to look in the lower left of the card. That location is where a gate is going to spawn. Different things will happen if there's already a gate there, or if there's an elder sign there, but at the moment there is nothing anywhere, so a gate is going to spawn. They're all shuffled up into a stack. We take the top one, and it is going to send an investigator to one of these other worlds, should they go there. So we draw a random gate, and we're going to put it face up on the witch house. Now, clue tokens have been placed on every unstable location. These red diamonds show that. Unfortunately, when gates spawn, those clues are sucked into the gates and gone for now. And had an investigator been in there, they'd be in a bit of trouble now. We also draw a monster from the Monster Cup, which has also just got base game monsters in it. A formless spawn is over there. So the monsters, they have certain symbols on them that are going to determine when they move. And maybe for some other effects. They have an evade value on the top here. So if you want to sneak past them, it's going to modify your evade dice, your sneak dice, by this many. And then on the other side, it will tell you any special effects that they've got. 
a bit of flavor text and their fighting values. You've got to do a sanity check and it's going to mess with your dice this much, a strength check and it's going to do this much to your check and it's got this much health toughness. So this formless spawn has physical immunity, which isn't great for a lot of our people because yeah, they've got guns and stuff. And then Gloria has a spell though, so maybe she needs to head over to the witch house. Back to the card, it tells us that a clue appears at the Black Cave. So we can pop another clue there. So Black Cave is really quite good. We want clues for all sorts of things. Rerolling dice, spending them for stuff, but mainly we need to spend a load of clues to seal gates, which isn't, you know, you don't have to seal them. You just need them to close them, but sealing them, as we'll see, is much better later on. We need five clues for that. One person needs five clues and then to go through the game. So we've opened the gate, we've spawned a clue, now we move monsters. So there are symbols over here that correspond to the monsters as we saw on the formless spawn there, and they are on either a white or a black background. So we can see that the formless spawn has that hexagon. So it is going to move according to the black arrow. So if it's in a location, both arrows will just move it out of that location and into the streets of the section that it's in. If it's in the streets, you can see there's a different route for black and white. So it's going to move from the witch house to the streets of French Hill. There are other monsters with different colored borders that move in different ways, but the black bordered normal monsters just uh, do that. And then the last thing we do on a Mythos card is activate the top thing, the main ability of the card. So this is an environment. This card's going to stay out until another environment takes its place. So it costs two fewer clue tokens to seal gates. So that's fantastic. A new one of these is drawn at the end of every round though. So if we can grab three clues and go through a gate and seal it, it, it might let us seal one early. So I'll just leave that to the side of the board to try and remember that. Now, whenever a gate opens, you have some extra rules for when he gains doom as well. But whenever a gate opens, the ancient one gains a doom on its doom side, not its elder sign side. So right at the start of the game, Yig is 10% of the way to waking up. Okay, so first of all, we have the upkeep phase. Certain powers like Vincent's healing power happens in the upkeep phase. You refresh any exhausted cards and you can adjust skills a number of steps equal to your focus. So if we did want Gloria over here to come down to French Hills, she is one, two, three spaces away. So she'd need three movements. The only kind of extra is that rather than using the little cardboard standees, hey, I've got minis that are mainly from Mansions of Madness. If we think that she can fight, that might not be a bad thing to do. So Gloria only has one speed. That's your movement amount. So would she want to adjust that so she could move more? She has got the motorcycle that lets her move two extra spaces though. Actually, you know what? She'll use her two focus to move her fight up. I think she's just going to go and fight that formless spawn. And to maybe help out with this, she is also going to try and cast the voice of Ra. So when we use spells, we need to use our law skill. So that's four dice for Gloria, modified by the spell card. So that's going to be three dice that she rolls. As with many alchemy things, you succeed on a five or a six, unless you are cursed or blessed. But like a lot of spells, this one has a sanity cost. So she is going to lose a sanity for trying to cast this. So she's got four law, minus one for the spell. She's rolling three dice to try and get a plus one to all of her other checks this round. Let's see if she manages it. She does not. She has a one, a two, and a two. She does have a couple of clues already. You can spend a clue to add a die to the test. And you can do this after you've rolled. I don't think it's worth it that much though. It's a shame that she's lost her sanity and that we haven't really gained anything for it. But hopefully she can do better in future checks. Does anyone else have upkeep? Now, if Gloria can defeat that monster, the way will be clear for someone else to go in through the gate. Say Joe. Joe has three clues. That's enough to seal a gate at the moment. Downside is it takes a, a turn or two to do that and the Mythos card might change in the meantime, which would be a shame. That's something we could plan for. So his speed at the moment is six, two, three, four. He only needs four. Maybe he should use some of his three focus to turn his speed down so his sneak goes up. So even if the monster's still there, he might be able to sneak past it. And Vincent just wants to go somewhere with clues. Two speed will be fine for that. Okay, I think that's done for upkeep. Then we have the movement phase. You have different movement based on whether you're in another world or in the streets of Arkham. We're all in the streets of Arkham, so we move the same. You're moving a line is one of your total speed. You've got to evade or fight each monster when you are leaving an area ending movement in an area or staying where you are without moving. But any combat will finish off your movement. So 
I think, well, Gloria is our first player. She has got one speed, but she can exhaust her motorcycle, just turn it around to move two extra. One, two, three. She's in the streets of French Hills, and I think she's gonna face off against this formless spawn. Now the formless spawn has physical immunity, so this ax is gonna do nothing against it. Gloria is, however, gonna cast Wither. So this has a casting modifier of zero, and a sanity cost of zero. So you might as well try it. If she succeeds, she'll get plus three to combat checks until the end of the combat. So she can roll four dice this time and hope to cast the spell. And there we go, there is a success. She does it. She could choose to evade, of course, before combat even started, but no, she's fighting. So first of all, she needs to perform a horror check. She uses her will, which at the moment is only two. It's not great, kind of put it all into fight. Uh, modified by the blue number here. So minus one means she only gets one die for this horror check. If she passes, then nothing happens. We move on. If she fails, she loses two sanity and we still move on. So let's have a look at her horror check. Can she keep her sanity in the face of this formless spawn? Yes. And then she can choose to flee or fight. Flee is an evade check. She's here to fight though. So she's going to use her fight skill, which is three dice and the wither gave her an extra three. Fortunately, this dice set only has five in it. So we'll just roll them twice. Okay, so that's her three dice. She's got one success and the plus three from her spell. She needs two here because the monster's toughness is two. And she gets, wow, four hits. So the toughness is the test difficulty. There is no damaging enemies in Arkham Horror. You kill them or you don't. So yeah, really important to make sure she can have these plus three dice because this is a magical spell and it's not magically immune, which some enemies can be. So if she'd failed this test, she would take this much damage and we would continue fighting. She has chances to evade and all of that stuff, but yeah, she would take the damage. She succeeded though. So this monster is defeated and she gets it as a monster trophy. There are several things that you can do to turn in trophies, like say the police station where Joe Diamond is. Usually when you're at locations, you're gonna get an encounter. You're gonna draw a card, Based on where you are, you're going to read out a thing, do some tests, bad things will happen. But at certain locations, you can ignore the normal encounter phase and do what it says. So say at the police station, you can spend 10 toughness worth of monster trophies, two gate trophies, or five toughness worth of monster trophies and one gate trophy to become the deputy of Arkham. So she has two toughness already, and there are various things you can turn in toughness for allies and stuff, but she's got two, which is a pretty good movement phase. The downside is she is in the streets of French Hill and she won't get an encounter. Vincent has two movement. He starts out at the hospital, of course, where else? Uh, he is just going to come over to the woods here because there's a clue and it's only two spaces away. So he's gonna move one, two, nothing in his way, nothing stopping him. And hopefully he can find something interesting out in the scary woods. Joe Diamond is at the cop shop. He has got four speed and that's exactly what we wanted, isn't it? He is going to move one, two, three, four, and he is going to step through the gate at the witch house. Nothing happens just yet. He's just on that space. But now we've had the movement phase, we move on to the Arkham encounters phase. So based on where you are, you will draw a card or jump through a gate. Now in the streets, you don't get an encounter. So we can skip Gloria. Vincent is in the woods. There is a deck for every area of the board. So every different color here, every street name you can see is a different area of Arkham and has its own deck of cards. And even in just the base game, there is like is eight different cards for each location. So Vincent's encounter in the woods. You are bushwhacked by the Sheldon gang. Pass a luck minus one check to avoid their trap. Vincent has set his luck at three, so he's got a decent chance, hasn't he? This would be bad to fail. He's got two dice, and there we go, he succeeds, he's fine. Otherwise, he would have had to lose two items and two stamina. Things can just be brutal. And finally, Joe Diamond is on a space with a gate. So rather than drawing a card for this location, he is instead drawn through the gate to the other world of Yugoth and is placed here instead. Later on, once people have come back out of gates, they might be on a space that's got an explored token to show they've already been through that gate. They don't get drawn through it again in that case. So we've all had our Arkham encounters. 
The next phase is other world encounters. Joe Diamond's the only person this applies to because he is in Yugoth. We have a great big stack of gate cards and you draw from this deck until you find a card with a color matching the colors next to the other world that you're in. There is a house rule that you can do where like alternatively you could keep going until you find one that actually says the name of your place. So red doesn't apply. We're looking for blue or yellow. There is blue and you either resolve an encounter that names the place that you're in. If not, you read the other section. So this does say Yugoth. Pass a sneak minus one check or the creatures capture and experiment on you. Joe's sneak is three. He's getting two dice for this. Uh, he's got a lot of clues to spend, but he doesn't want to spend them. It's okay though, because he succeeds. Otherwise he would have lost half his items and returned to Arkham with no memory of the experiments. So that is it for other world encounters. Finally, we have the mythos phase. As we saw at the start of the game, we draw a mythos card and resolve the same things in the same order. So we have got which burning anniversary. The unvisited isle is the location where a gate bursts open. Out here in the merchant district, that clue is lost. A monster is entering our world and it is a warlock, harder to sneak past, has magical immunity. And if you pass a combat check against them, uh, you put them back in the box and get two clues rather than getting them as a trophy. So the yellow border on monsters is a special like movement condition. Yellow means they never move, no matter what the card says. And a gate has opened, Yig stirs in their slumber and they've got two doom tokens on them. Next up, it tells us a clue appears at the science building. So there's a couple there now. Monsters move. The only monster is one that does not move. So let's ignore that. And then finally, it is a headline. This this is just a one-off thing we resolve then discard so the environment stays for now an ancient curse strikes arkham releasing two monsters into the river town streets glory is close by so the ancient curse releases a chthonian so green means they have special movement it's easier to sneak past them instead of moving roll a die on a four to six all investigators lose a stamina so their health basically they are pretty tough to fight against Ouch. And it did say two, didn't it? So we have also come across a zombie. Again, easy to sneak past. They're also undead, of course. This doesn't mean anything special unless something references undead, like weapons and things. Okay, then that's our mythos phase done. And so we are finished with round one and we are back to the upkeep phase. Now, fighting or sneaking past both of these doesn't seem that clever straight away. Glory's thinking about maybe jumping to the science building. There's a couple of clues there and then maybe next turn she could try and jump through that gate and the unvisited aisle. Or does she just go now? Try and beat it's a pretty tough fight against that warlock though, especially since her spell wouldn't have any effect and it ain't moving. She'll go to the science building this turn. So yeah, do doesn't need to change her speed or anything like that. She isn't going to be fighting. She probably isn't going to cast a spell either. She'll just keep her things as they are, I think. Maybe turn down a law one if she's not going to be casting a spell. Oh, Vincent should have hoovered up that clue last round. When you end your movement in a place, you get the clue. He's going to turn his speed up a little bit and see if anything's going on at the old historical society where there's a clue kind of near him. Joe does not need speed, so I think he is just going to turn his sneak up in case he's called upon to do anything. His fight's really high and his will isn't. I think that's okay, though. He's going to turn his luck up. Could always do with a bit more luck. Okay, then, so movement. Well, actually, the first player should be passed to the left, so technically, Joe should be our first player. Joe is actually in another world, and each other world is divided into two spaces. You get no movement points here. If you're in the left section, you get moved to the right section. That's your movement phase. Gloria is going to go over to the science building and see what's happening there. And then Vincent is going to use his three movement to go into Southside and check out the Historical Society. And they are going to hoover up the clues in the places they ended up in. And then it's time for Arkham Encounters. So starting with Joe, he is in another world, so nothing in the Arkham Encounters phase. Gloria is in the Science Building. A professor of the occult asks you to hold a hideous statue that he believes to have strange powers while he reads a scroll. Energy shoots through your body. Make a luck minus one check. So Gloria, thanks to her skill, has got three plus one for luck. And if she does decide to spend a clue to get one extra die for this test, she would get two instead. Let's see if she can manage it with her base stats though. And she rolls, yes, success. 
Your spirit rises from your body and you feel that you have the power to switch bodies with another investigator. You may choose another investigator from the pile of unused investigators and bring it into play as a new character, discarding your current investigator, along with all your items, skills and trophies and everything. If you fail, nothing happens. Well, yeah, I, I think we'll leave that. That would be good in another situation if you were, like, on the verge of death or something. You could just get someone new, but Gloria's in a pretty good position now. We got the two clues, though, which is what we came for. Vincent is over at the Historical Society. You meet Cindy Fleming, a young geology professor at the university. She offers to show you some interesting formations at the Black Cave. If you accept, move to the Black Cave and draw two cards, encountering one card of your choice and discarding the other. Now, the plus side of being moved to the Black Cave, it's got two clues on it. Now, it seems, from a quick look at more knowledgeable people, you don't actually get these. You only get them if a clue's placed on your location in the Mythos phase, or you end your movement in that place. Although, it seems to be a heavily suggested variant that you just pick them up at the end of whatever phase you're actually in. The downside of moving there is, he might end up a bit hemmed in by these enemies here. He has got a bit of combat to him, hasn't he? But only a bit. I think he'll move there. Because he'll get another encounter now, won't he? And he'll have a bit of choice as to what it is. So I had the choice of two. I've gone for You are attacked by a shadowy being, but a large man leaps out of the darkness and drives it off. He introduces himself as Tom Mountain Murphy. Make a luck minus two check. So that would just be one die. Or discard a whiskey card to pass it automatically. If you pass, he joins your investigation. I mean, Vincent randomly got a whiskey at the start of the game so he'll go for that he'll offer the whiskey to mountain murphy so we find him in the ally deck and pop him out here vincent now gets plus two fight and you take no stamina loss from the overwhelming ability that some monsters can end up with so that has worked out quite well i think that's the end of the Arkham Encounters, so we can go to Other World Encounters, and Joe Diamond is still in Yugoth, so same thing, keep going until we find a blue or yellow card. There's a yellow one straight away. Breathing hard, you stay huddled against the rock until the sounds of pursuit fade into the distance. No encounter. Okie doke. Well, that's nothing bad. Can the Mythos card stay as it is? Can the environment stay out? So our Mythos card is City Gripped by Blackouts. Unvisited Isle gets a gate. But there is already a gate there. Monster Surge. A number of monsters, the number of open gates or number of players, whichever is greater, appear divided evenly among all the open gates. But no gate can receive more monsters than the location on the Mythos card. So that means there are two open gates, there are three players. We are going to have three monsters spawn here. But there is a monster limit in play, uh, which is six. Is that going to be? Yes, they can spawn, can't they? There are three at the moment. So they're all going to come out of... Oh, dear. Yeah, we can't have more coming out of a different gate. So two are going to come out of there and one from this one. So the, the two are going to come to the unvisited isle. It's going to be a Shoggoth. The red monsters are fast and move twice. It's got physical resistance and it is nightmarish. If you pass a horror check against it, you still lose one sanity. And a high priest, hard to sneak past. They have magical immunity. So a lot kind of guarding that gate right now or spilling out of it, really. Over at the witch house and waiting for Joe Diamond when he jumps out of this gate is going to be an elder thing. When you fail a combat check against elder thing, you must discard a weapon or a spell if able. Very bad sanity check easier health check. Ouch, so that monster surge happened because we tried to open a gate where there already was a gate. Then place a clue token at the science building. Now, if a clue is placed during the mythos phase and there's an investigator there, they get the clue. So Gloria has five clues right now, so wouldn't actually be worried about that headline going away. Move monsters. So any hexagons move along the white and then the line, triangle and star. I don't think that applies to anybody that can move anyway. Oh, Triangle, Chthonian, they don't move, do they? But instead of moving, roll a die, and on a four to six, everyone loses a stamina. It's a five, everyone loses stamina. It needs dealing with, but Vincent can heal that stamina right back up, and he can go to the other investigators, I suppose, and try and heal them. The upside of having Vincent around, and then the headline, the general store, curiosity shop, and ye old magic shop are closed until the end of next turn. Leave this card in play until then to indicate this. So we need some closed tokens on there. They will actually close as the terror level increases as well, and the 
owners just get out of town. There's the magic shop and the curiosity shop is there. So can't go to them next turn anyway, but our environment is still in place. That's a headline that just happens to stay in place for the next round. But our environment should still be in play for when Joe Diamond comes back out. So in upkeep, Vincent's going to use his physician ability to restore a stamina to himself. And what is he going to do? Is he going to try and sneak past? Or is he? I think he's going to stay in the black cave so he can just get these two clues. It would be silly to ignore them, wouldn't it? He should have the first player token. Yeah, does anyone really want to mess around with their abilities? No. So Joe Diamond has Otherworld movement. If you're in the right area of an Otherworld location, you come back into Arkham through a gate with that location's name on. Doesn't necessarily have to be the same one. The only Yorgoth one is the gate that he came through, though, and he wants an Explored token underneath him to show that he is not going to get drawn back through this gate. That Explored token stays with him until he leaves the location. So he doesn't have to seal it this turn. He, hope, he hopes to, though. Uh, the Elder thing, any monsters in the location where you come out of the gate, you don't have to evade or attack them this turn only. In the future, though, he's going to have to deal with that Elder thing. Gloria is going to motorbike onto the library. See if she can find anything out there appropriate. And Vincent... Oh, yeah, he's staying where he is, isn't he? Okay, then, so Encounters... Everyone is in Arkham. So Vincent is our first player and still in the Black Cave. Bats, hundreds of them, pass a speed minus one check to get out of the cave safely. Vincent has three speed, so it's just going to be on two dice. And he fails. But that's not too bad because he can just heal himself that one sanity at the start of next turn. Not a lot of good stuff happening at the Black Cave. Although he did find uh, Mountain Murphy, didn't he? Joe is in a location with a gate. And he's explored it so he doesn't get drawn through it. Instead, he is going to try and close the gate. For this, you need to make a law or a fight check with the modifier that is on the gate. So you see that it's a minus two there. Joe has zero law right now, but he does have five fight. So his maximum law was three, so he wants to use his fight for this. Minus two is on the gate, so he's only going to get three dice for this. And he wants to save his three clues to seal the gate so he really doesn't want to have to spend them on re-rolls for things so he fails three 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 there is no effect on a fail but he's got to wait until next turn to try when this mythos might not even be in place and he's going to have to deal with the elder thing does he spend clues just to try and close it again he's going to hang on gloria finally is in the library you doze off and enter the dreamlands have an encounter there and immediately return here so we need to find a Dreamlands encounter. You come across an abandoned onyx quarry whose chiseled vacancies are so vast that it staggers your mind. Pass a law minus one check to avoid awakening anything here. So that's two dice. We haven't found a lot of good stuff at the encounters really, have we? Let's see though. Can she succeed here? She does. So she doesn't have to lose three sanity, which would have been pretty bad. And then she is dumped back in at the library. We've all had our little encounters, and we've got a hope not for an environment. It's another headline. Terror at the train station. The witch house gets a gate. Oh, no. It's okay. We're at the... It's not okay, but we're at the monster limit. So three monsters are going to try and spawn now. We're already at our monster limit of six, so they have to spawn in the outskirts instead. Now, they're not going to come out of there. They stay there until the outskirts are full. Our limit at three investigators is five in the outskirts. And if it should ever go past that limit, we put them all back in the cup and the terror track goes up. Then monsters move. The moon or the plus monsters. Oh, zombie is moon, so moves along the white arrow to French Hill. And the high priest is a plus and moves out into the merchant district. Clue appears at the black cave. Oh, and Vincent should have picked up all these at the end of his movement and picks this one up as it spawns now. So he's got six clues. And finally, a rusty train arrives in Arkham, disgorging two monsters into the north side streets, which again is quite unfortunate because they're going straight out into the outskirts. We are at our monster limit, so nothing happens yet. But the next monster that comes out is going to increase the terror track. And that's that. So there is a few rounds. I was hoping to show you closing and sealing a gate, but Joe messed up. All of these are open again now, aren't they, for next turn? Maybe we need to get to a shop and start buying some stuff. We've got cash in that. I'm going to leave it there for this episode. Join me next time where we will see if Joe Diamond can close this gate to Yorgoth and face off against the Elder Thing. Will Gloria tool up and go and take on the Warlock and jump through that gate to the Dreamlands? And will Vincent ever leave this Black Cave? 
Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you for the next part. Bye.